Before we get into talking about the new approach that, that they're taking to drug development, I thought it would be best to take a minute to look back at how we got to where we're at right now. And, and Newman, I'm gonna throw out this first question to you. Um, if you look back at, at the changes that have taken place in drug discovery, especially if we go back maybe 20 years ago and, and, and coming up to the present, how has drug development uh, changed and evolved over that time, especially in this area of immune-mediated inflammatory diseases that, that all of you work in? Thanks, Ed. And uh, thanks also for having all of us on Clinical Leader Live today. It's really our privilege to be able to meet with you today. Um, there really has been a, a remarkable amount of transformation over the uh, last 20 years. Uh, I would break it out into maybe four uh, different categories just in terms of our understanding of the immune system and its impact on how uh, we develop drugs, our deeper understanding of the diseases that we treat, uh, the technologies that are available to us to uh, enable uh, or get us closer to enabling precision medicine or uh, matching the, the right drug uh, with a specific patient's disease. And then I'm going to also mention the platforms that we have for uh, developing drugs. Uh, but first, uh, our, our understanding of, of the immune system, I mean, I, it really has been a transformation in immunology over the last 20 years. If you look at the volume of, of scientific information, publications that has uh, come out over the last 20 years, it's remarkable the depth of understanding that we've gained into the immune system. And, and I'm not going to say that we're all the way there yet either. There's still a lot to learn about the function of the immune system. But uh, our, our understanding of the immune system has really grown. It is The immune system is incredibly uh, complex. And uh, the, the work that has been done has led to a much deeper understanding uh, the different uh, pathways that are involved in, in impacting immune function, the different cells, how they interact with each other, and our deeper understanding of the immune system. The consequence of that is it has really broadened the potential targets or, uh, that are available to us to, uh, to try to remediate disease. Um, the second big change is our deeper understanding of uh, diseases. Just like understanding the uh, immune system, uh, the past 20 years has really seen an explosion of information about the molecular underpinnings of uh, diseases. Um, interestingly, one of the things that we've learned in immunology is that common immune dysregulations may underpin a number of different diseases, and that's very relevant for the topic that we're talking about uh, today. The, a, 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 a dysregulated immune pathway may manifest itself in different ways in different patients, but many, many immune media diseases do share a common uh, a pathway abnormality. An example of this, probably the, the, the clearest example of this is what we've learned about the role of TNF in many human diseases. Uh, is, probably most people in your audience today know TNF blockers are now used in a variety of rheumatologic and GI and uh, dermatologic diseases. And this observation underlies some of our thinking about the relevance of key immune pathways in disease and how we've really focused our uh, development strategy. Um, the, the third, along with developing a deeper understanding of the diseases, we've also developed a deeper understanding of the heterogeneity of diseases uh, in, uh, for immunologic, in, in immunology, immunologic conditions. Um, we know that with, with, with certain diseases, uh, there may be a critical key pathway that underlies that disease. So I'll just point to psoriasis. We know that the, the TH, the, the IL-23 uh, pathway, TH17 uh, pathway is critical for psoriasis. And most patients with psoriasis will respond to a drug that blocks uh, that pathway. Um, but not all diseases are, are as clear as, as psoriasis. Uh, we know that a lot of patients, as an example, we know that a lot of patients uh, with rheumatoid arthritis will re respond to a TNF blocker, but not 
all patients will respond. And even the ones that respond, of the ones that respond, not all will get into remission. And these observations are leading us to focus on strategies that can help us to identify the patients that will respond to a, a particular therapy or that won't respond so that we can select the right drug for the right uh, patient. And then uh, finally, the platforms that we have to develop drugs have dramatically evolved over the last 20 years, and that's expanded the molecules and the targets that we can now drug. Um, as an example, new technologies are emer emerging that enable us to uh, disrupt specific protein-protein interactions. Um, th this was uh, just a, a dream uh, 20 years ago, developing small molecules that could, develop, that could uh, disrupt protein-protein uh, interactions. But new insights into different platforms that we can use for specific targets is, is enabling a lot of, uh, of new drugs to be developed and may enable oral therapies uh, uh, for uh, developing, for, for targeting protein-protein interactions. So all of these things, I think, are leading to uh, a, a, a fantastic opportunity for uh, addressing many of the unmet needs in, in immunology today. Great. And, and you mentioned pathways a couple times there, and that leads us perfectly into what we'll be discussing uh, for most of the call today. I know one of the things Jensen is things doing Jensen is, is looking at some of the more underserved areas uh, where, where patients really need some help. And that approach is being driven by what the company calls this, this pathway approach. Uh, Terrence, I'll go ahead and jump to you. Can you tell us about the pathway approach uh, and what it is and basically how it's evolving, how you think about disease in patients? Sure. Thanks, Ed. And again, thanks for having us on today. Um, you know, it's been a fantastic 20 years in immune-mediated disease therapeutics. Um, as Newman highlighted, Janssen has been fortunate to be a fairly central player in a, a string of uh, first-in-class therapies that have in many ways revolutionized the outlook for patients in what we now regard as the big rheumatology, dermatology, and gastroenterology diseases. And so uh, Janssen became over the years a real disease area expert company in, in rheumatology, say particularly in rheumatoid arthritis, for example, in dermatology and psoriasis, in gastroenterology and inflammatory bowel disease. The, uh, the shift in our pathway approach is, uh, you know, we've recognized that what got you here won't necessarily get you there. Um, there is a huge waterfront of unmet need in more underserved disorders uh, beyond the big and busy diseases where we've been fortunate enough to contribute in the past. And um, thus really the, the biggest shift is we're pursuing pathway biology towards unmet medical need in immune mediated disease, wherever that might be. And so that means within room, derm and GI, we're moving to more underserved disorders. and. We're also actively moving well out beyond room, derm, and GI. So, for instance, today we have active programs in maternofetal medicine, in immune hematology, in immune and inflammatory kidney disease, and we partner actively with other therapeutic area colleagues uh, here at Janssen in neuroscience and cardiovascular medicine, acknowledging that you know the immune system is a hugely important player in many different kinds of disease. And so, um, for sure, this approach is, is allowing us to pursue a much broader waterfront of, uh, of disease areas. I'll also say that operationally, um, the prior approach that served Janssen and the patients we serve very well was to, for a new medicine, develop it in one disease at a time. A big shift in our strategy in the last number of years is to pursue more parallel drug development. So for a promising new medicine, we're, we've lately been shifting to invest at the same time in parallel, developing it in multiple diseases at the same time. Yeah, and that's a huge yeah. game changer. If you talk to folks in the industry about the biggest challenges they have with clinical trials, it's usually the time it takes and the cost involved. So certainly targeting a medicine for, for multiple pathways rather than just one uh, seems like it would be a great fix for that problem. Um, Lloyd, yeah. I'd like to bring you in as well. Anything you'd like to add there? 
or touch upon? Yeah, thanks for thanks, Ed. Um, I, I would definitely like to add on to uh, what what Terrence and both Newman uh, already spoke about by saying what Janssen has been able to do and what we've learned from our own medicines. Uh, for instance, use the um, which Trey's name is Stellara. Uh, not only has and this is a pathway that inhibits both IL-12 and 23 has efficacy and is approved in psoriasis, psoriatic arthritis also arthritis and Crohn's disease. So you can see one pathway can be targeted and you can actually treat four different diseases in all these different disease areas from dermatology to rheumatology to gastroenterology. We see the same pathway, the IL-23 pathway, with our most recent um, drug, Gaselcomab or Trimphia, which has now been approved in psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis and, under, under, and, and in trials, ongoing trials now and Ed, you also mentioned about going into rare diseases or underserved populations. Um, we already have an approval. Uh, there's a pretty severe disease that patients suffer from, especially in Japanese uh, populations where they get uh, called palmoplantar plantar pustulosis, where they get painful um, blisters and pustules on the patient's hands and feet. And we are one. We are the first drug to be approved with. Um, with uh, Tremphia being improved in, in Japan for palmoplantar pustulosis. So it's a way to expand one drug can treat a single pathway, but the single pathway is involved in multiple different diseases. And that allows us to expand uh, into different diseases uh, as Terence has mentioned. And, and the example of both Stellar and Tremphia already have shown um, how Janssen is executing on that strategy.